get a £5 free bet every week with Offer Club from William Hill. Simply stake a total of £20 or more across the week on pre-match football accumulators with four or more selections and you'll get a £5 free bet on the Friday. Join William Hill Offer Club on mobile or online now. This is Coogan Cassis for Eiffel TV in association with Macklin's in Marbella. Press conference here in London for Billy Joe's uh, first, first defence. First defence of his role title. Can you stand still? Better late than never. Been out of the ring for, what, four years? Nine months. Ten months. Nine months. Nine months. Why are you being so quiet? Why? Why are you being so quiet? I've been partying, I've been partying, what not, I don't know. Listen, it's just one of them things, got an injury. Um, you know, we was in talks with another fight, won't mention our names. Fell through, wasted time. No one's fault, but we learnt for this year, shall I say. On to bigger and better things. What do you know about Akavov? Ranked 12th uh, in the WBO currently. 11th. I know that um, he had a good amateur career. Went to the World Games. Um, you know, listen, Cookin, it is what it is. It's my first defence. Um, I'm telling you, I am badly ring rusty, right? I've been sparring, time and often sparring. Listen, it might pan out to be a good fight. It might. I might go down to his level. I just don't know. He, he looks fairly sharp, to be honest. Um, but listen, he's got to be beaten, isn't he? He's got to be beat. He's an opponent, he's live, he's dangerous. He's going to want, it's his first world title shot, so he's going to come for it. He's just not going to come and lay down, that's definitely for sure. Well, now obviously you're sort of eyeing uh, one of those big fights against Canelo or Golovkin, but ideally you fight on the 22nd, come through that, looking to fight again before the year's out. Yeah, that's what I want. I want October and I want December. Um, that also puts me, that puts me um, some good work in for hopefully February or March. You know, I'll, I'll slowly start back in January, February, and hopefully fight in March. One of the big names, but um, like I said to Frank, bring any one of them two big names, because they are the two biggest names, even though Canelo is not a middleweight. Um, well, on paper he's not a middleweight, but he is. So um, bring me one of them and we'll have it. I believe Golovkin gives you the harder fight out of the two. 100%. Listen, I, I personally think that, not, I, I honestly think that I'll have a field day with Canelo. I think that, without being big headed, I think that he won't get nowhere near me. Nowhere. So you beat him every day of the week, twice on Sunday? Twice on Sundays, yeah. Because some days I wake up, God's day I wake up in a good mood, so I just beat him twice on Sundays. Is money a problem with potentially fighting Golovkin? Not really, no. I mean, listen, I've got offered money now, often Golovkin, you know, they come back with an offer. It's, it's good money. It's money that if I really wanted to, none of my family will never have to work again. Not one of them. Um, immediate family. It's, it's one of them things. That, listen, Kogan, I set out in life, I set out from boxing when I turned pro, I set a figure in my head to earn. I set a figure in my head to earn what I'd be happy with. I've earned that, plus more. So. It's now, or it's still about the money because you know these big fights you got to pay for. But it's something now I want to see if I'm good enough. Am I good enough? I'm telling you, I'm good enough. I believe I'm good enough. Am I? I talk the talk. As the people say, let's see if I can walk the walk. We'll see. Listen, we'll only find out when the fight's made. I could go in there and like the rest of them, shit myself before I get in there. You know what I mean? Just lose me bottle completely, let him walk through me like everyone else does. Or I could think, fuck him. Fuck him, I don't give a shit about him. I'm gonna give you everything I got now. Now come on, all right. Or like I say, I could, I could just uh, swallow. Take an iden, get out, cash me check. Well, happy days, retire. But do you think I'll do that? No, actually, I know you wouldn't. Oh, there you go. The people who don't know me might think I would. It's easy to think that, isn't it? Very easy to think it. Because for it, for me to swallow it, he'll have to hit me with a sledgehammer into the temple and kill me stone dead. Because never in my heart will I have a swallow against nothing. Ever. Never. For no man. No man at all. What mentality do you think Kel Brook winning for that fight? I think Kel Brook... Listen, you, people go on about Kel Brook. 
he, he done unbelievably well. You know, he went in there, he, um, he went in there, he took Golovkin's best shot early on, took it, took it well, recovered, then come back the second round, letting his own shots go. But it's just, he's just, he can put all the muscle on he wants, he can put all the weight on he wants, but physically he's not used to that. He's, that's not his performance weight. That's not his performance weight. And um, nothing let him down. He done his name good, he done his trainers good. And I thought he, uh, his trainer done a very, very good job at the time um, when he stopped the fight because he's very experienced. But, you know, I take nothing away from him, but I'm a middleweight. Cal Brook, you know, he's a good fighter, a very good fighter, but I, I believe that, you know, I'm, I, I believe in my own head that I'm definitely one of the best middleweights and proven with the WBO belt out there. And I want to prove out to be the best. Am I? We'll see. Yeah, you've got to take the fight first, obviously. Hundred percent. Yeah. Who's got a pen? Anybody got a pen? Anyone? Well, Cheers. I'll just give that to. I'll just that pen. Because listen, Canelo pen, Golovkin pen. They're both ready, sitting here, right? I've got the pens waiting to sign the contracts. The first one to come back, I'll sign. Simple as that. Are you having a dig at Eubank? I'm not going to dig at him because listen, don't even listen. I don't want to talk about him because let me tell you, right? Him, he's uh, without getting into it, he, he turned the fight down for a British title. He turned a, a fight down for a British title. Tommy Langford, he, he, he refused to fight. Um, but I don't even want to go on that. The only thing I will say is that Lerone Richards absolutely poleaxed him the other day in sparring a southpaw who I took out for sparring for the Andy Lee fight. I swear to God, and he, he's a Christian man. He wouldn't lie, he rung me and told me he poleaxed him, and Eubanks was going mad in the ring after. But that's another story, move on. Where was that then, what gym? What, that was at, I heard it was at Eubanks gym, yeah. Lerone Richards, good fighter, I sparred him for the Andy Lee. Very slick, and he absolutely schooled him. Bad. And then he pulled out afterwards with the, with the, uh, with the fight with uh, Tommy Langford. Thanks for a bit of information, we didn't so, know that. Yeah. Um, on a serious note, obviously, tragic thing that happened in Glasgow last yeah, Thursday, yeah. Uh, with the passing away of Mike Tao. Um, it's a really, really harsh reminder that the sport is as serious as it is. But you get some people slag off other fighters, you get some people, oh, he's scared of this, oh, look, he put a terrible performance in, but every time they step in the ring, I know it's a sport and we do it for everybody's entertainment, but it's very, very dangerous. Um, you know, my thoughts and, and prayers go out to his family. I'm deeply, deeply, you know, sorry for it, but it's just one of them things what's happened. It's probably a one out of a hundred times it happens. One out of a thousand. Sadly, it's happened to that family, and you know, I hope everything goes well for them. And um, you know, I think that Ricky Hand done a very, very good thing starting the charity. Donate five grand. Yeah, fair play to him. So, um, but that's whether you donate five grand or five billion pounds, never going to bring him back to his family and only doing the sport he loves for a few quid. So everybody just, you know, respect the fighters, I think. If they put in a shit performance, tell them, but, you know, every time they get in there, it's only that one shot can change, the, change their family's life and end their life forever. You said in that press conference, uh, it's quite evident you feel, obviously, Tyson Fury is in a very bad place at Bill. Yeah, listen, um, I speak to him, people, listen, in the boxing world, he's this big, He's just big criminal, big crook, who's uh, done drugs, he's drug cheat, he's just, but trust me, Coogan. Um, I, I was talking to him the other day, I've known Tyson more or less all of my boxing life. Met him through boxing, kept in contact since, a very good friend of mine. But he's in a very, very bad place. He's in an extremely, extremely bad place where, you know, his dad is a lovely fella, John, his uncle Peter, they're very, very sensible, very, very clever, very intelligent men. They ain't got no input or say because he's mentally gone. He's in a very, very unstable place and I hope he gets well soon, but I hope more importantly that the only thing what can save Tyson is his boxing, but he needs to get mentally right back for it. The only thing can save Tyson is his boxing. He can save his life because without boxing in his life, I, personally myself, I wouldn't, I wouldn't write suicide off the cards. I swear to God, he's in a bad, bad place. And you know, I hope he gets well soon. He's put a tweet out today to suggest he's retiring to the because sport. Listen, that... Coogan, look, he's gone, 27 year old, he's defrowned a champion of 10 years. He's done the, he's done the invincible out in Germany. 
he's yeah. come back to be welcome, to be a warm welcome. Everybody really waiting for him, cheering him, well done. He's come back for nothing but critics from day one. For nothing but everybody on him. As soon as he landed off that plane, a week later, two weeks, like 14 days after winning that title, they stripped him of one of them titles. Then, all of a sudden, he's this, he's this drug cheat. And all, listen, how much more can somebody take at that age? Looking on social media every day, looking on this, looking on that, people seeing him, slagging him. I'm not saying nothing's right. I'm not saying nothing's right, but we're only human beings, we're not robots. Do you blame him for the, the picture that he tweeted out a couple Look, of days ago? He's, me listen, he's, not, he's mentally unstable at the minute. He's, that, he's had that from a doctor. He's mentally unstable. It's not, that, that's not Tyson. This, none of this is Tyson. He just he needs help. And I'm sure he's going to get it. But I think people just need to give him a little bit of space and certain, some governing bodies need to consider. I'm not saying make a change or make everything right for him, but need to consider consider about, let's not rob him at the minute, let's get the whole situation out, my opinion, but you know, it's time to learn. Um, it's not long to your fight, mm. obviously not three weeks, less than three weeks now, mm. so you look about, like I said, slowing overweight now. Yeah, I look. You look better than when I last saw you. Yeah? yeah. Don't touch me, Kevin. <laughs> I'll sue you. Okay? No, listen, camp's gone well. Um, I've been in training for a long while now. Um, it's, it's just been, it's just been, um, it's just been doing my brain in really sat about, but not on my own doings. Some of my own doings, maybe. But listen, I'm back on track. 22nd of October, then again in December, and get one of the big boys out. One of the big boys. Did you see my interview with uh, Rosado? Look, I don't want really to get into that. But people keep trying. Fight, people keep trying to talk their way into fights, yeah. That because was a good fight, let me tell you, Coogan, look. There's there's Peter Quillen owned this belt. There's Andy Lee owned this belt. There's Nadam owned this belt. They're all got some sort of say. Well, not so much Andy Lee. Um, Rosado, he's been beat by everybody, right? But they didn't use. Look, we see what happened in Scotland. So do you really want to carry on taking that chance as many times as you can, or do you want to earn as much as possible in the less fights you possibly can, and then walk away? And then look at, enjoy other people doing it. You know, people need to realise that when, you, when you're when you in this position, you need to financially make it work as well. Because I don't want to, oh, because right, oh, he called me out, let's go and have it now, because you called me out. And that ain't business. It's about business as well. You know, you've got to be a little bit more cute around business. Like the dam at this tile, and he was boxing in the amateurs a couple of months ago. He's gonna have to fight to his. He's probably he's still fucking got a car out on rent. Well, he's still paying up probably, but no fault of anybody else's but his own. So people's gonna call me out. People's gonna talk rubbish. And Rosado, he is rubbish. Okay, well listen, Billy Joe's on this thing. You're taking you very up much. everybody's time now. Don't say it now. All right, you've had enough. Thanks for the time for TV.